On the 15th of February 2021, Harry and Meghan dropped a bombshell. Prince Harry and Meghan will give their first interview to Meghan's friend, Oprah Winfrey. The $6 million question, though, is just how far Meghan is going to go. I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent. I expect this interview not only to reverberate through the United States and England, but to rock the establishment at its very core. With the Queen also set to address the nation, are both sides now engaged in a war of words? If they keep popping up and making public pronouncements, of course they're going to be in the media glare. The relationship between the Markles and the Windsors seemed like a fairy tale. With the interview, and now allegations of bullying by Meghan inside the palace, which she strongly denies, it appears to be over. Outsiders have struggled to do well when they enter the royal family. Ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Tonight, the inside story of when Hollywood glamour and ambition took on the establishment. Meghan wanted to have a celebrity boyfriend, and she definitely got that with Prince Harry. Forget the red carpets in Hollywood. This was something else. For me, it's a, an added member of the family. How did a marriage made in heaven descend into a public slanging match? I think Meghan's Hollywood background would have hit the royal family like a hurricane. Harry felt he was freeing himself, but probably felt like an act of vandalism against the monarchy. Stripped of their titles and patronages. The Sussexes are isolated from what everything the royal family means, and that puts the royal family at peril. Exiled from royal life. The Queen's statement said a clean cut. You're out. In other words, you're fired. We miss Harry and Meghan. With just over a day until Harry and Meghan's groundbreaking interview with Oprah, is this the final chapter in their battle with the monarchy? I'm just really relieved and happy to be sitting here talking to you with my wife by my side because it's been unbelievably tough for the two of us, but at least we had each other. Meghan and Harry, they could have resolved so many issues, but they're stubborn. And is this the moment that Meghan and Harry finally reject royal service in favor of celebrity? There is no relationship between the Markles and the royal family. It had the potential to be so much better than in fact it turned out to be. I did not have any understanding of just what it would be like. Harry, new lives away from the royal family, having swapped the regal backdrop of Windsor for the luxurious Hollywood Hills, in a move that echoes Edward VIII's infamous abdication. Quite a lot of us thought back to the abdication crisis in the 1930s when Wallace Simpson, a twice divorced woman, fell in love with um, a king, and that king, Edward VIII, had to give up his throne in order to marry the woman he loved. Harry and Meghan had to divorce themselves from the royal family, just as Wallace and, and Edward had to divorce themselves from the monarchy in order to continue their relationship. Now, with the Tell All Oprah Winfrey interview, are Harry and Meghan distancing themselves from, and even setting themselves against, the Windsors? strikes me that they feel that they can continue to control media coverage of them, control the way their image is portrayed. Yeah, we'd all like to do that. With the very public and unexpected announcement of their second child, what will the future hold for Harry and Meghan and the monarchy? The sad and harsh reality of this scenario is that by abdicating from the royal family completely, that the Queen and Prince Philip may actually never see the second child. And one can only think how devastating and uh, broken the Queen must feel about that. In December 2017, Meghan Markle made history as she became the first royal fiancé to spend Christmas with the Queen. Talk about a baptism of fire. Here was a rare exception being made. Kate Middleton was not invited as, as William's girlfriend to spend Christmas at Sandringham with the royals. But here was Meghan doing just that. The Queen is very strict when it comes to family. And so to be invited was quite a significant thing. 
I'm sure uh, Meghan Markle was absolutely terrified. Although she had only met Harry the year before, Meghan was being fast-tracked into royal life. This extraordinary special treatment could have possibly annoyed other members of the family. Perhaps Andrew and Sarah, because Sarah Ferguson had famously been not invited to spend Christmas there when her daughters and ex-husband were there. Maybe a few people might have felt that their noses were put out of joint because they've had to work so hard with the protocol and the rules and the regulations. And here enters Meghan and is straight into Sandringham. I think it would have been a very diplomatic line that she would have had to walk. Despite the huge pressures of a first Christmas with the in-laws, being face to face with senior royals was a perfect opportunity to charm the firm. I'm sure it must have been pretty daunting actually for Meghan to rock up at Sandringham for Christmas with the Queen. What do you give the Queen? You know, what you... The royal family had this tradition of not giving each other expensive gifts. In fact, the cheaper the gift, the better it is. Harry once gave grandmother, you know, a pair of rubber gloves for, for doing the dishes. I mean, r really quite bizarre presence. Meghan would have found that as extraordinary as a certain uh, Diana Spencer did at her first Christmas by buying lavish gifts for her in-laws. She never made that mistake again. Meghan uh, played a blinder on that first Christmas. She got a toy, a uh, singing hamster for the Queen, and apparently she loved it, and uh, so did the Corgis. Despite winning over the Queen, Meghan's well, Christmas wasn't completely free from controversy. After the festivities, a remark from Prince Harry on live radio was said to cause tensions between Meghan and her own family. I think we've got one of the biggest families that I know of, and every family is, uh, is, is complex as well. So, no, look, she, she's, she's done an absolutely amazing job just, you know, getting in there, and, it's, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the family that she, I suppose she's never had. Harry was um, guest editing the Today programme on Radio 4. A short Afterwards, and he said they'd, they'd had a lot of fun at Christmas. And then he made a rather um, unfortunate remark. He said, um, I suppose it's the family she never had, meaning Meghan. Uh, well, that went down like a lead balloon with the Markle family, obviously, and it's a, a remark they've never forgotten. The family Meghan was joining was a far cry from the world in which she grew up. It was against the golden backdrop of Hollywood that Meghan's parents, Doria Ragland and Thomas Markle first met. Thomas went into the entertainment industry and became a lighting director. And it was when he was doing that job on the show General Hospital, a big show, um, that he met Doria, who was training at that time as a makeup artist. Um, she was 12 years younger than him, but um, they, they fell in love and got married. And uh, Meghan came along a couple of years later. Thomas had been married before, so and he had two children much older. Meghan uh, from his first marriage, Thomas Jr. and Samantha, uh, her two half-siblings, they weren't close to her, she was not close to them. Despite her parents divorcing when she was young, Meghan enjoyed a supportive upbringing with both Doria and Thomas, evident in intimate home videos that have been shared online. Go ahead. And hear her energy, and it, it all feels like these are the positive highlights of somebody's childhood growing up. Uh, am I there? I wonder. Okay, see you later. Bye bye. Where is the little button? Okay. I Alice also gives an insight into the early and possibly fractured relationship with her father. We're about four minutes from my dad's house. From my dad's house, you can see the Hollywood sign, but we aren't going to go there because my dad and I aren't on the best of terms. She says, we're not going there because my dad and I aren't getting along at the moment. This also gives a hint at a, a real relationship and it might show the reality of some of their relationship, that perhaps it wasn't always great. Despite potential frictions, Thomas continued to be a strong presence in Meghan's life as she immersed herself in Hollywood. She hung around the studios where her father was the lighting director. It must have been really exciting. And she certainly got the bug. Her first big brief came with suits when she got um, the, the plum role of Rachel that everybody fell in love with. Um, Rachel's character was very sexy, she was savvy, she was ambitious. It's actually not dissimilar to Meghan Markle herself. Whilst Meghan was being thrust into the limelight, Prince Harry, a young officer in the British Army, was trying to escape it. 
And what do you think the public perception of, of Harry is? Um, I don't know, it fluctuates, it depends on what the media want to write, I suppose. But they're two very different things, what the public think and what the media think. The British public have always had a huge amount of affection for Prince Harry, but certainly the press have had quite a love-hate relationship with him. He was seen as um, a bit directionless. He was seen as a bit of a party boy. He liked having a good time. Despite being labelled a party prince, as he entered his 30s, Harry proved that he still had an important role to play within his family. He created some wonderful initiatives, the Invictus Games, which was really his baby. He also worked on Heads Together, you know, taking away some of the stigma surrounding mental health and mental health issues, being very open and honest about his own struggles, which was incredibly brave. And Harry was, at that time, arguably the most popular royal. In 2016, Meghan touched down in London. The last thing she would have expected was a blind date with the fifth in line to the throne. It's a lot easier if you have a boyfriend that understands the press and understands fame. And she definitely got that with Prince Harry. You could be a more famous man in all the world than Prince Harry. Buckingham Palace proudly announced the engagement of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. God save the Queen! At the end of November 2017, news of Harry and Meghan's engagement emerged from the palace. <laughs> there was immediate um, analysis and commentary about the fact that the royal family was going to welcome in a woman of mixed heritage, an American woman, and a woman who was divorced. Two completely different families were to be joined together. But behind the scenes, tensions had already emerged. In my opinion, the engagement interview was when things really started to sour. You met each other's families, I imagine. Yes, his family has been so welcoming. And Megan, your parents, do you think, you know, well, very happy for you, obviously. Do you yes. think they have worried at all about the scale of what you're getting into? Well, I'm sure at the onset, uh, both my parents and my close friends were concerned. I did not have any understanding of just what it would be like. The year before their engagement announcement, Meghan had landed in the UK to promote her latest season of Suits. Lizzie Cundy spent time with Meghan as she settled into London life. Meghan and Harry were set up on a blind date by a mutual friend. They immediately clicked. Harry actually said it was like love at first sight. She was so open and he thought she was so sweet. And they just got on like a house on fire. Oh, yay! Thank you for watching. Hi, there. Hi, Meghan. Hi, Gerard. Very few people knew the couple were dating, but Meghan let her mother, Doria, in on the secret. Any young man wants to make a very good impression, and I don't think Harry was any different. So when they met in, in L.A. in a rather luxurious mansion, he, he was a bag of nerves, apparently. She rather less so. She said that the meeting um, was a little bit surreal. I suppose it would be. Hey, hey Mum, he, here's a prince. But it went very well, and, and Harry has become extremely fond of Doria. She's been a close part of their lives pretty much ever since. But Harry and Meghan didn't meet with her father, Thomas. This is one of the great what-ifs of the whole saga. Why didn't Harry go to Mexico to meet him? Why didn't Meghan take him? Why didn't Harry insist before it all blew up? I mean, the whole thing was so avoidable, and I think Harry have to, to take some responsibility for that. Thomas was simply not part of these early meetings. She seemed, as she got closer and closer to Harry and a royal life, to be less and less inclined to rekindle her relationship um, with the Markle side of her family. For a few months, Harry and Meghan were able to keep their relationship from the outside world. But eventually, their secret got out. There weren't many that knew, only a very few friends. Then suddenly, it got leaked to the press that we had a new girlfriend. If you haven't read any of that coverage, she's Meghan Markle. About it. And Harry knew more than anyone things were going to change. Whilst Harry was used to intense media pressure, nothing could prepare Meghan and her family for the attention that followed. After the relationship became public, there was a huge amount of interest in Meghan. Some of it was extremely negative. 
there were things like that that I think put a really bad taste in Harry and Meghan's mouth in terms of the underlying and even blatant racism. With the glare of the world's media now upon both the Markles and the monarchy, questions were quickly asked as to how the relationship had reached the press. When in a relationship or dating with a member of the royal family from the palace, it's not an easy thing to keep secret. Prince Harry's got his close protection and they're very discreet. But at the same time, there's other people who quite enjoy, can I say, um, a gossip. In the case of the leak about Meghan and Harry's relationship, which Harry was said to be incandescent and furious about, was rumored to have come from someone in Prince Andrew's camp. I have no idea if that's the case, but what I can say is that there are so many leaks in the family. There were rumors about Harry's new girl, and he was madly in love, and those got out, and, uh, and I don't think Harry was quite prepared for all of that when it happened. The wave of intense media attention led Harry to take a public stand against the press. An explosive public statement from Harry was the first indication that the press were now on notice. He requested the media pause and reflect before any further damage is done. The one thing the royals are meant to do is make sure that everyone is on the same page. And the fact is that the Prince of Wales was abroad on, a, on an official tour. Charles himself was only given a matter of moments to scan his son's statement. And there was a feeling that, that, that Harry had been thoughtless and that he should have consulted his father. He should have consulted his brother more, um, and they could have been a more measured response. With Harry and Meghan's relationship now public, the media interest was out of their control. But Meghan would need to put all that to one side as she focused on important meetings behind palace walls. Meeting your in-laws is always a bit of an ordeal, isn't it? And uh, meeting your in-laws when one is going to be a future king, <laughs> meeting Prince Charles, must have been quite tough for Meghan bit daunting but she is a strong woman she probably marched in there and just got on famously because she's a woman with lots of opinions lots of views um, and a confident woman and that's those are the kind of attributes that Charles likes Charles famously adored Meghan that first meeting went extraordinarily well she was welcomed as a daughter even more so than Kate Middleton was at the very beginning <laughs> As well as charming Prince Charles, Meghan also had a very successful first meeting with the Queen. Which is an extraordinary thing for the um, way the Queen keeps her schedule. Meghan was warmly welcomed. You know, here she is articulate, bright, intelligent, well-spoken, beautiful, elegant. What's not to like? Despite charming Harry's family, did Meghan soon start to resent aspects of royal protocol? The Markle way, it seemed, was not the Windsor way. Meghan's first real reality check with how royal protocol works was when she was wearing a necklace with H&M on it and then told to remove it by senior courtiers because it might encourage the press. To be told what to do, it must have been quite a shock. Anyone would kind of think, hang on, wait a minute. Someone telling me what to wear and, and which jewellery to wear, you know, excuse me. Was it an early sign Meghan wasn't prepared to toe the royal line? She likes to have the freedom to do what she wants and when she wants. She wouldn't want to be told, you know, what to wear at any occasion. You could look at this this instance and say, was that the beginning of, of Meghan saying, I'm not going to have people like this um, controlling me? Despite a whirlwind introduction to royal life, Meghan stood firm. And as the final preparations for the royal wedding were put in place, Meghan's mother, Doria, was introduced to the establishment's key players. She was given VIP treatment. I suppose perhaps it was her first taste of being associated with royalty, you know, being whisked through security at Heathrow Airport. She was taken first to Clarence House to meet Charles and Camilla, and I think that went very well indeed. Meeting all the royals, Kate, William, Charles, must have felt like royal speed dating. I've got to get to know everybody. I've got to form these connections really quickly. Even the rather wonderfully confident Doria found, you know, fairly awesome actually meeting the Queen. Harry, again, had prepared his uh, mother-in-law to be by saying, you know, she, she's my grand, she's my grand, try and think of her that way. Though I don't think many people think about the Queen that way. While Doria was winning over the Windsors, another member of the Markle family was conspicuous in their absence. 
it had been planned that Thomas Markle would have flown over and that he was going to walk Meghan down the aisle as father of the bride. However, it came to light that Thomas Markle had worked with a paparazzi photographer to stage photographs um, of him ahead of the wedding. He was living in Mexico, surrounded by paparazzi. He tried to set up this deal with uh, a photographer um, in the belief that they would then go away. Well, I'm afraid that just shows his naivety. The family that he'd let down his beloved daughter, who he used to call Princess. What we've since learned, according to members of the family, is that there was zero support from Buckingham Palace or Harry and Meghan in order to support Thomas. The stress of dealing with the press and the build-up to the big day took its toll on Thomas. Just days before the wedding, he had a heart attack and had to go to, to hospital. He had to have stents put in. By the time he emerged, he said that he was not able to fly um, because of these procedures, and he pulled out of the wedding. And this was, this was a huge drama on the eve of, of a wedding. I mean, it's stressful enough marrying into the royal family, but to do it with all this scrutiny and this media frenzy and this scandal around your family, you know, it, it, the stress must have been unbearable. Despite the frenzied build-up, Harry and Meghan's big day was finally upon them. But with her father unable to give her away, Meghan was left with a huge dilemma. And finding a solution, she broke with tradition, leaning on Harry's father, Prince Charles. I thought it was the perfect embodiment, actually, of the modern woman, that she started out on her own, walked halfway down on her own, and then Charles joined her. It looked right, it sort of gave us an idea of, of what Meghan was going to be like, a sort of declaration of independence, if you like, on her part. I don't need anyone to give me away. I'm... I'm I'm, I'm a free person. Was Meghan's independence also evident from the wedding's exclusive A-list guests? We saw Idris Elba and George Clooney and Oprah, you know, walking in. There was this kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't know Meghan knew all these people. It was a, a star-spotting day. And she looked great. The bride looked fantastic. It was a wonderful day. I think everyone just thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and you just felt a sense of true welcome of this young bride in, into the royal fold. To the eyes of the world, Harry and Meghan's wedding had the flavor of a fairy tale. Meghan wanted it to be right. She wanted it to be perfect. But she wanted it to be done her way, not the royal way, or, or how the other royals had done it. Forget the red carpets in Hollywood. This was something else. But even as the signatures on the wedding license were still drying, the Markle's wider family were beginning to make themselves heard. Everything seemed so, I don't know, magical, hunky-dory after the wedding. Then it all got a bit soured, a bit tarnished by Meghan's fan. ...come to an abrupt end. She was an adult, she had her own ideas, and she was going to do it her way. In the past, the Royals Marry Royals, the, all, the, the organisations, the firms all worked together to make sure there's no issues, where they, they can't have that control when you're marrying it into, can I say, normal families.
Just days after their wedding, the new Duke and Duchess of Sussex was seen at their first official engagement, a garden party at Buckingham Palace. This one actually was a little bit special because uh, the theme uh, was Prince Charles's 70th birthday. And that must have been extraordinary for, for Meghan. From the first instance, the Queen had implored upon the Windsor family to embrace Meghan. Not only because she was a person of colour and someone from an international country, but that she had this charm about her, almost this sassiness. Everything seems so, I know, magical, hunky-dory after the wedding. We've got this wonderful new uh, mixed heritage, modern woman as part of the royal family, such a symbol of the monarchy moving with the times. And then it all got a bit soured, a bit tarnished by Meghan's family piping up again and again. It's so good to have a role model or someone you look up to, but oftentimes when it's someone who looks like you or comes from where you come from, it's easier to connect and see it in a different way. Megan was used to cameras and publicity, but really nothing can prepare someone for entering the most famous family in the world. And I think even she, she admits she was taken aback by it. <laughs> As Megan was ordinary that Megan's dad did like a press tour in the days after the wedding, putting forward his side of things. It can't have been very easy for Megan to watch her dad on television publicly disputing her side of the story or her version of events. Well, I'm very disappointed by it. Uh... Millions watched as he gave an interview to Good Morning Britain, saying he hadn't heard from his daughter since before the wedding. I'm not sure why it's happening, and uh, uh, I'm waiting, I'm reaching out. I've been trying to reach out uh, for several weeks. Every, every day I try to text her. It demonstrated that here was a man who was going to, you know, shoot from the lip, if you like, and he wasn't af afraid to say what he wanted. I love you very much. You're my daughter, and I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, whatever differences or problems we have, that we should be able to work them out. We're family. If you think about a father-daughter dynamic, and this is, an, this is an intimate family space, so there are now three of them. It's Meghan, it's Thomas, and it's the media. I do have sympathy for Thomas Markle. This was a guy who had never been a celebrity, had never courted uh, fame and being a celebrity, who was thrust into a national spotlight with zero support. In the past, when royals marry royals, they all the, the organisations, the firms all work together to make sure there's no issues, where they, they can't have that control when you're marrying it into, um, can I say, normal families. Seemingly to cope on his own, Thomas continued to speak out in the press. Meghan took full control herself because it was her dad, and the palace didn't feel that they could step in and insist on how she handled things with her father. She was an adult, she had her own ideas, and she was going to do it her way. If that's the case, it was a gross miscalculation and a huge mistake. Where was any help from Harry or anybody in the royal household to, to, to give him some guidance? Was he even offered it? Did he turn it down? I don't know. As her deteriorating relationship with her father continued to play out in the press, Meghan became centre stage in the royal family. Once you're in the family firm, you are uh, put to work, and I covered their, their first big tour in the autumn, which was Australia, New Zealand, uh, Fiji and Tonga. It was relentless, but, you know, they were the most famous couple in the world, and the world wanted to see them. I think for Megan, it may be a bit of a shock because these tours are, are quite full on. You know, the, the, the long days, the long hours, uh, lots to do. Royalty, British royalty and how to do things. Then a surprise announcement by the couple wrong-footed the royal press pack, signalling that from now on they were determined to do things their way. The palace press officials were there going through the itinerary. And at the end of that, uh, the British royal correspondents called into a corner and we were told, oh, and by the way, she's pregnant. It's like, what? 
It was massive news and strange timing, but I think Harriet Meghan made that announcement because who knows, in those early stages of pregnancy, she might have suddenly felt that that tour was going to be a bit hardcore and she'd need time off. As Meghan and Harry prepared to start a family of their own, wider members of the Markle family began selling stories to the tabloid press. Meghan's half-siblings, uh, Thomas Jr. and Samantha, just seemed incapable of keeping quiet at this point. They Every, every other week, it seemed, they came out with some more very cruel criticism of their half-sister. The fact that none of them had been invited to the wedding clearly rankled hugely. You know, Meghan's answer to that was that they played very little part in her life. In a remarkable interview for ITV, Samantha criticised her stepsister. The smiling and the waving and, you know, the um, contrived British accent, uh, you know, it, it, it all, it was all seemingly great and wonderful then. But when the public began to criticise uh, some of the expenditures and the behaviours and protocol that had been broken, the tune changed. The Queen and, and, and members of her family must have been very disappointed, is probably the word, that Meghan's family had chosen to speak out in the way they did. What are the chicken eggs? <laughs> so was Meghan's key ally in the Windsor camp also now under pressure? Charles has tried to be a uh, support, a listening ear, um, to give guidance, uh, to uh, help the couple. But from the very beginning, Harry and Meghan have done things their way. The couple themselves were under increasing pressure in the media. Now the £2.4 million renovations to Frogmore Cottage came to the fore. Harry and Meghan took any kind of criticism very personally and none more so uh, than the debate over the renovations to Frogmore Cottage. Frogmore Cottage is not a cottage. Uh, it's quite a few different buildings that uh, they've knocked through, spent a lot of uh, taxpayers' money on renovating it. Harry took grave exception uh, to this idea that they were uh, lavishing public money on something which was unnecessary. And it, it did feed into the narrative as far as he was concerned, every motive and everything they did. Meghan's mother, Doria, could only watch on as her daughter struggled with the criticism and harsh media spotlight. There's no doubt in my mind from what we can see that Meghan has a really close relationship with her mother. Somebody who would always, you know, have her back, speak truth to her and, you know, help her make the kind of choices that she needs to make. It must be difficult for any mother to see her daughter being splashed over the papers for things that she might not want to be in the papers, but ultimately you can't control the press. It's a beast of its own. But on the 6th of May 2019, Meghan and Harry were able to share some happy news. Meghan gave birth to a baby boy, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, and secured the couple's direct line to the throne. Uh, and baby are doing incredibly well. Um, it's been the most amazing experience I could ever um, possibly imagine. Archie would be part of the bloodlines of a storied family with hundreds of years of history behind it. Harry and Meghan released a touching family photograph to mark Archie's monumental first meeting with the monarch. There is Doria, a black woman. There is Meghan, a biracial woman. In that picture, there's so much hope, and it does not look like the stuffy royal family that we all know. The birth of Archie was uh, quite a moment for the Markle family, certainly. But for Doria, that must really have resonated with her. She was over here, so she was very much part of this, this new little family. After the birth, Meghan decided to keep her mother close by. Doria stayed on with Meghan and Harry at Frogmore Cottage. And the royals began to visit the new arrival. William and Kate went on their own without their children to visit the baby. People saw that as a snub. I don't think that was fair enough. They didn't want three children running around the place. He would have turned up, given his brother a hug, and they would have congratulated them. Charles took 10 days before he visited Archie. Camilla could have been in tow. He perhaps thought he was being respectful. But when her mother returned to Los Angeles, did Meghan feel alone? 
Doria was very supportive, but of course she had to go home. So I think Doria's absence would have hit Meghan very hard. In public, the Sussexes appeared to be content with royal life, but behind the scenes, cracks were beginning to appear. I think she did feel very misunderstood and she felt trapped. And so she decided to do something about it. And I think that she and Harry, I think she kind of, she and Harry kind of fed the monarchy. They wanted an exit strategy from the royal family. With the birth of Archie in May 2019, Meghan and Harry seem to have cemented their place at the very heart of the royal family. Despite ongoing battles between Meghan, her family and the press, for now, their popularity with the public remained undimmed. I think the Queen had um, high hopes for them being, you know, great brand ambassadors for the royal family. Harry and Meghan made it clear they wanted to be different kind of royals. They wanted to engage more. Uh, they clearly wanted to have uh, close links with, with young people. I think the Queen seized on that with alacrity. Harry and Meghan were enormously popular, and I think everyone thought uh, this was the cementing of the future of the monarchy. There was going to be um, these two young couples, um, William and Catherine, Harry and Meghan, taking it forward. In September 2019, the new family embarked on a tour of Southern Africa. On the surface, they seemed happier than ever. You have given us so much inspiration, so much hope, and above all, you have given us joy. Thank you. But in reality, they felt under pressure. In a revealing interview for an ITV documentary, Megan dropped a bombshell. Yeah, well, I guess, and also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's, um, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. Remember, at this point, she's had an absolute beating from the press on a sort of daily basis. She had this horrible fallout with her father. She's also a new mother um, as well, and you can just see the sort of weight on her shoulders. Her mother would have been heartbroken that her daughter was experiencing all of this. The interview seemed to mark a sea change in the once happy relationship between Harry, Meghan and the rest of the royal family. Meghan seemed intent on sort of ripping up the royal uh, guidebook, if you like, and doing things her own way. Over time, that turned into a stance, a stance against what's perceived to be royal norms, not speaking out, not seeking publicity, not challenging the press. And as much as the Queen tried her hardest to ingratiate. One of the rules of being a member of the royal family is you never complain about anything. So I think that um, they would have been furious. And the sad thing is, I think, you know, she was just being honest about how she felt. But that interview probably made things about 100 times worse in terms of already frosty relations. For William Charles the Queen, duty and public service and loyalty to the institution always comes first. Being selfless is the creed by which the Queen, Charles and, and, and William live by. Harry then opened up on the relationship with his brother William. He revealed his true feelings to journalist Tom Bradby. Never to be, you know, stuff um, stuff happens. But look, we're we're brothers. We're, we'll always be brothers. Um, we're certainly on different paths at the moment. But I will always be there for him, and as I know, he'll always be there for me. Harry's revelation further fueled the rumours there had been a breakdown in relations between the two couples. Was it now Harry and Meghan versus the monarchy? I think it stemmed from William giving what he believed to be good brotherly advice to Harry make sure about your feelings about this girl. And from what we gather, it, it was those words, this girl particularly, that riled uh, Harry. We, the, the media, went a bit to town on that fab for, but that wasn't to be. It's really sad because when I was working for them, Prince William and Prince Harry, they were close. For the 
And Prince Charles, this fallout would have been disappointing. Harry and Meghan were now fighting battles on multiple fronts. As the negative headlines continued to engulf them, they became increasingly frustrated with palace protocol. I think someone like Meghan, who's always been very outspoken, would have struggled very much with not being able to comment and put out her version of events. This is not what happens in Hollywood. Meghan couldn't do that as a member of the royal family, and that would have been maddening for her. Hello. Hello. Harry and Meghan's ongoing battle with the media came to a head in February 2019, when excerpts of a private letter sent from Meghan to her father were published in the British press. This letter was such a watershed moment, and I think this was the point at which, you know, this was the straw that broke the camel's back, and they announced that they were going to fight back and that they were taking legal action against associated newspapers. Meghan believes that her privacy has been invaded, and that, that, that she has the copyright over those letters, and uh, Thomas Markle believes the opposite. And remember, he hasn't even met Prince Harry at this point, so there was a possibility that had this gone to court, the first time at Nightmare, it was very, very high stakes. A recent ruling in the case went in Meghan's favour, but there's still a possibility they could end up in court. There is one residual issue over copyright, um, and I think that certainly um, the, the Mail on Sunday and Associated Newspapers will be pushing hard to try and get that to court. In the wake of their legal action against a section of the British press, Harry and Meghan announced they were taking a six-week break from royal duties and heading to Canada to spend Christmas with Doria. What you do sometimes psychologically for yourself is move yourself from a situation that you find difficult and painful and put yourself in a space that you feel might be more nurturing and safe and secure. Christmas is a very, very important part in the Queen's calendar. Uh, she likes to draw her family around it. She and Prince Philip were getting older. They knew that there wouldn't be too many more Christmases and they must have been disappointed. Christmas at Sandringham is uh, quite a formal affair. So it must have been great for Harry and Meghan to have the informality of, of a Christmas in Canada. Doria is, it could not be further away from the stuffiness of the senior members of the royal family. Although the festivities may have been relaxed, were decisions about the growing divide between Harry, Meghan and the monarchy being considered in Canada? I suspect that Meghan uses her mother a great deal as a source of wisdom and advice. I'd be astonished if during that time both she and Harry, no doubt, uh, hadn't spoken about the fact that they actually wanted to step back as senior royals. They wanted an exit strategy from the royal family. Doria and Meghan are extremely close. She missed her mum and she wanted Doria to be very much part of the, uh, of the family unit. When Harry and Meghan returned to Britain in January 2020, they made a shock announcement. In a statement released in the last few minutes, they say they intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent. The royal firm had been here before. It was an electric moment in royal history. Diana had, had essentially left the royal family and before her, Fergie. Edward VIII left the royal family, he abdicated. Leaving the royal family is, is possible, but it's messy. Initially, it was a sort of a geographical split. They would be moving to Canada. They would come to Britain to do engagements when it suited them. The tabloids dubbed their decision as Megxit, and it sent shockwaves through the royal family. I actually spoke to some colleagues from the royal household, and we were all in absolute disbelief that this is... ...himself, but for his father and brother, and grandmother, it probably felt like an act of vandalism against the monarchy. They would have been both furious, but equally heartbroken as well. Away from the royal family, Meghan's supportive mother, Doria, treated the announcement with the utmost discretion. I think Doria has acted in the most regal way in all of this, because the royal way is to uh, don't complain <laughs> and don't explain. And that's exactly what Doria did. However, the wider members of the Markle family again talked to the press. Thomas Markle saying, oh, she, she dumped her own family, now she's going to dump the royal family. 
they suggested that this was always Meghan's intention from the off. And Samantha is an arch critic of everything she does. She thinks her sister's a phony. She thinks she's insincere. In the Windsor household, the Queen called an emergency meeting at Sandringham. Prince William was centre stage. It was an extraordinarily awkward uh, family meeting, and uh, there were reports that William was actually less inclined to negotiate. Sure, it must have been quite tricky. It's the first time the two brothers had, had been together in the same room for quite some time. The Queen, and, and certainly Prince William's view, was that the royal family doesn't work like that. As an institution, you've got to be around for the whole gig. You can't just pick and choose. The Queen issued a statement that outlined a transition period to allow Harry and Meghan to step back from their roles as senior members of the royal family. The Queen's statement was, was obviously uh, very much from her heart, but at the same time, it, it was very uh, clean cut. You know, this, this is how it is. You're out. It's as simple as that. Preparations for their new life could begin. But what would become of the broken union between Harry, Meghan and the monarchy? Meghan and Harry seem to live by the beach, you know, do yoga. It's a very different life to the Windsors, and I don't think Harry will ever be able to go back to that life. And how would life stateside affect the dynamic between the two families? In January 2020, Harry, Meghan and Archie left behind their royal life and home at Frogmore Cottage for a new life abroad. For Prince Harry, it was a big decision because he's leaving his friends, his family. He felt he had to get his family out of Britain. He felt so angry and hurt about the press and about the institution of the monarchy. in California, a familiar glitzy surrounding for Meghan. Meghan and Harry live in Montecito, which is a very posh, uh, fancy enclave. I happen to live there for four years. It's very private. We know that Oprah is a neighbor, Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. They all live nearby. Montecito residents are very protective of their own. They won't talk about Harry and Meghan much to the press, and I should know because I've tried. She wanted to be around the place she knew. Megan didn't know hardly anyone here in the UK. And it can be a very lonely place in the palace. She didn't want that life. She wanted to be free. So I do feel Megan had that influence over Harry to say, look, I'm not happy with this and I'm going to the States. That's what Megan wanted and that's what Megan got. They reportedly bought the bath mansion for 11.2 million pounds they've seamlessly slipped into the californian lifestyle a million miles away from the windsor's world their friends are not going to be members of the aristocracy with wonderful estates in in scotland to shoot grouse on but hollywood and and, and a celebrity culture oprah winfrey's a friend of of megan and megan's mother they're friends with the clunies and um, they're making connections all over tinseltown Harry and Meghan have been spotted at the beach cycling with Archie uh, in tow. They have a wonderful lifestyle in California in the sunshine. And I can't imagine Meghan ever wishes to be back in rainy Windsor. But you do wonder sometimes what Harry thinks of all of this. And is he, in fact, missing his old life? Meghan and Harry seem to live by the beach, you know, do yoga. It's a very different life to the Windsors. What tore Harry from the British people was Meghan Markle. 
the decision to move to Los Angeles. Megan never lost that desire. Was what she wanted. The move has only deepened the divide between Harry and Meghan and the monarchy. Meghan's mother Doria is now just a 90-minute drive away, a stark contrast to over 5,000 miles from the Windsors. Harry loves Charles. Yeah, you know, they clearly have a, a strong bond, and now they are literally not as close as they used to be. I think they are staying in, in touch over Skype and Zoom, but it's not the same, is it? I'm sure it pains Charles that he uh, will not have an active role in the upbringing of Archie. Harry seems to have an absolutely brilliant relationship with uh, Doria. And there's no doubt that Meghan and Doria are well, closer geographically, physically, and perhaps emotionally as well than they, they ever have been. Doria apparently enjoys feeding we Archie organic food. and. Um... He's also um, a, a trained yoga instructor as well. So I have these visions of them doing baby yoga together. So I think he's definitely a very cool, hippie, Californian baby. But could Harry and Meghan's plan to build their brand and become financially independent from the Windsors push the families even further apart? They recently released a promotional video for their podcast with Spotify, which reportedly looks set to bring them in around 30 million pounds. We created our virtual audio to make sure that we can elevate voices that maybe aren't being heard and hear people's stories. And the biggest part of this is to create this community of where you can share. Their biggest and perhaps most lucrative signing is with Netflix, rumoured to be worth over a hundred million pounds. But will the inevitable publicity from their deals be seen as a step too far by the firm? Effectively, the money that they are being paid is, is because of their platform as royalty, as members of the royal family. And that's quite tricky. People always want the, the most compulsive viewing and the things that are going to command the most column inches and, and effectively that then translates into dollars. Are those personal and intimate revelations? So I think that will be a very tricky tightrope for the couple to walk. They've created a new standard and that is one to exploit themselves for profit. Megan is creating new form of celebrity for herself by securing deals with media conglomerates in the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars sets her on a path to unparalleled stardom. Let's not be surprised if you see her return to acting. This here, right there, is the house from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> However, in February 2021, it was Harry, not Meghan, who took centre stage on CBS. It's 17 minutes skits with James Corden. It is really fun. Okay. It is very show busy. It is very celeb -y. You're not my wife. Yeah. In an unprecedented move, he gave a candid TV interview to his long-term friend, James Corden. Interesting, my, my grandmother asked, asked us what art she wanted for Christmas. And Meg said, a waffle maker. She sent us a waffle maker. I think... It's quite tricky for Harry because we know that one of the things that he found very uncomfortable was the press coverage. He is then talking about his personal life, he's talking about his grandparents, and that is going to be written all around the world. It's going to be turned into more clickbait. By choosing to do these interviews, it, it frankly just encourages more of that stuff to be written. I mean, why did you feel that that was... Harry, in a bombshell move, also spoke openly about his move away from the royal family. It was, it was stepping back rather than stepping down. Right. Um, you know, it was a really difficult environment, as I think a lot of people saw. We all know what the British press can be like, and it was destroying my mental health. The actions of Harry and Meghan in the United States goes against the very grain of the royal rule book. But the very core of this brand building exercise is not Harry, it's Meghan. There is a delicious irony where they live in Los Angeles, the heart of the paparazzi. At the same time, in London, they're fighting these legal arguments, and that must not be lost on the royal family itself. It's almost cringeworthy to an extent. As they embark on this brand building exercise, we're only gonna see earthquake after earthquake shattering Buckingham Palace. They know what makes money, they know what makes people tick, particularly Meghan Markle does. I mean, let's hope they don't get like the Kardashians, that's my only worry. I think that there were people who truly wished them well, but of course there were also people who wanted to poke, you know, holes.
into their love affair and bring out as much dirt as they could. I think they found a way to say, you know what, enough is enough. We refuse to be pillars of abuse. Then on the 14th of February 2021, they made another surprise announcement. There's a new baby on the way, but I think that is going to, in some respects, draw them further apart. And in the days that followed, a war of words erupted between Harry and Meghan and the monarchy. Taking part in such a high-profile interview with somebody like Oprah Winfrey, um, improve relations with the royal family at all. The Queen had no choice but to strip them of the titles. On Valentine's Day 2021, Meghan and Harry announced their second pregnancy to the world. New baby on the way, which is amazing news. But I think that is going to, in some respects, draw them further apart. They're going to spend most of their time in the US and they want to make their life there. The chances of the newborn reaching England in the foreseeable future is next to zero. And one must sympathise with the Queen. That's disheartening and heartbreaking. Increasingly, one wonders how much influence the royal family will even have. The royals are going to become distant relatives, I suspect. A year on from the bombshell announcement that Harry and Meghan would be moving away from the royal family, they made it clear they would be staying in California. Harry and Meghan's exit from the royal family ended today as it began with considerable acrimony. Buckingham Palace confirmed that the couple would be stripped of all their honorary titles and royal patronages, including Harry's military titles and Meghan's role as vice president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. I think Harry wanted it both ways. He wanted to be able to live a life free of responsibility, but still make change. And the reality was the Sussexes in another country are isolated from what everything the royal family means. And that puts the royal family at peril. So the Queen had no choice but to strip them of the titles. Within minutes of the Buckingham Palace announcement, Harry and Meghan responded, stating that they remained committed to their duty and service. Their quickfire response was reportedly deemed disrespectful by palace officials. I think Charles and, and William, and, and certainly the courtiers of the palace, felt that Meghan and Harry's pushback was disrespectful. It was petulant, it was resentful. And as one said to me, you don't disrespect your granny. Just days earlier, Harry and Meghan had shot an intimate tell-all television interview with their friend and broadcast legend, Oprah Winfrey. Then in the days building up to the broadcast, newspapers claimed that Meghan now faced a serious bullying complaint against her whilst at Kensington Palace. Her spokesperson said that she was saddened by the reports. Relations appeared to have finally hit rock bottom. The $6 million question, though, is just how far Meghan is going to go. The full truth, as she sees it, would be highly explosive, but it would certainly burn all bridges with the institution she has left behind. Whilst the news reportedly came as a surprise to the royal family, excerpts from the groundbreaking interview were later teased in the media. I'm just really relieved and happy to be sitting here talking to you with my wife by my side because it has been unbelievably tough for the two of us, but at least we had each other. She's open, she's honest, and she doesn't care about that impact. The interview's scheduled broadcast date has caused another row. With 99-year-old Prince ill in hospital, the timing has been criticised by the media, including Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain. And I'm sorry, I think we're entitled to say this is incredibly distasteful to be doing this kind of confessional in which they're bound to be critical about the royal family and the monarchy at a time when his grandfather is in hospital and clearly quite seriously ill. He wouldn't be in there for two weeks. It does smack of hypocrisy taking part in a, an interview, such a high profile interview, but improved relations with the royal family at all. In the days leading up to the broadcast, new revelations from the interview exposed the increasingly bitter war between Meghan and the monarchy. How do you feel about the palace hearing you speak your truth today? I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. It's almost like Prince Harry 
driving a wedge with a sledgehammer through his relationship with Prince William. William, as a staunch advocate of everything that the royal family means, is obviously going to be dragged into this. I expect this interview not only to reverberate through the United States and England, but to rock the establishment at its very core. Could Harry and Meghan's fallout with the monarchy leave its mark for decades to come? It's like a war. I don't believe Harry would be outside the royal family except for marrying Meghan Markle. They've lost a critical component of what the royal family represented. The British people had an affinity with Harry. Now to divorce himself from that family really is an abandonment of what he was born into. What began as a breath of fresh air cascaded into a series of family conflicts controversies and trouble for Harry and Meghan and the monarchy. These are family stories that are complicated, run deep. If people feel very hurt and betrayed and they feel that this relationship is broken beyond repair, then that might be the reality. For Harry and William, you know, they've reached a bad place in their relationship and one can only hope that they build bridges going forward because the only losers in all this will be them. Meghan and Harry could have resolved so many issues, but they're stubborn, and it's very hard to see how there can be any long-term relationship with Meghan and the Markles going forward. I think that in the initial stage, there was a fairy tale about this. I think it's a real lost opportunity for the royal family that they couldn't make it work, that, they, that Meghan couldn't become an integral part of the future of the monarchy. The monarchy could be seen to be so much more inclusive, modern, with the times evolving. I think it is uh, extremely sad. She was ready to do what it takes to be, a, to, you know, to be, to, to be a, a wife for Harry and to be a member of the royal family that, um, that the country can be proud of. But I personally don't think that wanting to be a member of the family should cost you your independence or independent thoughts. Megan's Hollywood background, Megan's expectations as a celebrity, would have hit the royal family like a hurricane. And now, look where we are. It had the potential to be so much better than in fact it turned out to be.